There's four. Look, look, I'm going to say five, and probably because I'm just going to steal one of your guys' things. Let's say four or five things I want to see next expansion. Okay. Now, I, I'll i be honest with you. I don't know if any of these things are going to get talked about in the, in the announcement. I'm kind of a little worried the announcement is just going to be a bunch of dumb lore stuff. But... It is what it is. All right, so I'm gonna start with the one that I care about the least. Oh, I did see. Razdruid, thanks for the gift sub to Maddie. I appreciate it. I did see. I just, you know, sometimes you like read it and then you you put it in the back of your mind to be like, okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention this after I finish my thought and then you finish your thought, but then you forgot, but then you read it and so you re acknowledged it. It's hard to explain. Anyway. Things I want to see next X-Pack. The first thing I want to see is... I'm just going to call... Look, this is going to be a basic thing to say. But I'm just going to say it because a lot of people want it. Okay, player housing slash way better horizontal progression for casuals. Flash THD. So here's the thing. The stuff to do in WoW as single player is like nothing. Like you don't really... It, it feels like if you're not raiding or doing Mythic Plus or whatever, you're not really doing anything for your character. And so what their solution to that has been like to create these zones or whatever where you like farm rep or whatever. But I, I feel like I just don't really... I don't know. I feel like they should just make the rewards way more cool. Like they should just, they need to step up their game with the single player, like role play, like stuff that you can do alone. Because right now the group content and wow is pretty damn good. Like the rating is good. Mythic plus is fun. PVP is PVP. You know what I mean? Like I think they keep trying to do weird stuff like Torghast and war fronts and all that but i think they just need to do better like single player horizontal progression like stuff that you can do to mess around because i'll tell you i'll tell you what okay here's the problem with here's here's what player housing does in horizontal progression that is actually very very underrated this stuff keeps you logged into the game and being what does being logged into the game do well the more people that are logged into the game the more likely you are to do something that's fun right like Let's say you log in, like, how many how many people have done this? You're like, hey, I kind of feel like playing WoW. You log in, you, like, walk around town, maybe do your dailies, and your friends list is completely empty, no one's online, or, like, no one that you normally play with or from your guild is online, and what do you do? You just log off, right? Because it's like, well, no one, like, I want to play, but no one's here to play, and I don't really feel like pugging, right? But if you add more stuff to do that keeps people logged into the game, that's fun, it's like, well... There might be three or four people that are logged in messing around in their house or like farming some stupid item or like, you know, I don't, like whatever people do with this stuff, like collecting Makoko seeds or getting, you know, doing some RP Final Fantasy thing. Like Blizzard just needs to copy all the good shit that's in all these other games and just put them in. But the key word here is horizontal progression. This means it doesn't change the power level of your character, right? It's just only transmog only only mount stuff like houses right makoko seeds are good makoko seeds are great you love makoko seeds chase there's so many memes about makoko seeds and lost ark so many people farm those i think makoko seeds are like an insanely good system all right now we're getting into the stuff that matters okay next one this is number one Number two, count wide everything. Besides gear, every single thing that you earn in the game should be available on all of your characters all the time. There's no reason that you should have to redo anything on any characters. The only, so exceptions are um, gear and uh let's say like a rating so like pvp rating 
mythic plus rating that sort of thing right however if this rating is associated with something else you can still get that across your other characters it's just that you don't have 3k io on your alts right but you don't have 3k io or 3k score but at the same time you can still get whatever because your 3k score the, yeah the perks for the rating are account wide okay and what this includes is whatever new system they do because let's be honest okay i'm gonna go out i'm gonna go out and say it a lot of the systems they've made over the past have not been that bad and some of them have been pretty fun and the only problem with all of them is the acquisition of the system just think back, right? Or not just the acquisition, but like this right here, account wide would fix it, right? Imagine if Covenants, everything was account wide, Renown, all the soul binds, all the conduits, everything, all the campaign stuff from the beginning, and you could switch whatever you want, right? Great system. Imagine essences, right? Corruption, all that shit. Like if that's account wide, imagine if corruption was just like a thing that you had and you could just be like, it was a profession. You could just enchant it on gear and you just use a resource or whatever. Everything should be account wide. And here's the thing, right? There are some games that you can justify not account wide everything, right? But WoW is not one of those games. Would player housing be account wide? Yes. I would say that you would have the same house on all your guys. I don't think you could have multiple houses, but maybe that's a thing. I, To be honest, I haven't really interacted with systems like that, so I'm not sure. But at least, at the very least, the stuff that you put in the house and the things that you earn should be account-wide, right? And the new system is going to be the very, very important part of this, right? Having the new system be frictionless and account wide is going to be important okay number three okay we need to reuse old content way better i don't understand time walking why is there oh this week there's only this one thing you can do why and then even then the rewards aren't even that good right so this needs to have better again sort of you can tie this together too right give people cool cosmetic rewards for doing old content i mean that's why they do old content anyway so the two specific things are old uh item level scaled old raids and look they don't need to do mythic okay like they don't need to redo the old mythic raids but at least like have item level scaled like heroic raids maybe like heroic and normal difficulty available for every single raid ever right why why not why not i don't understand and then on top of this right mythic plus old dungeons too right i've been i've been chirping this one for way too long Look, if they're going to come out with a bunch of cool new dungeons all the time, then that's fine. But if they're not, which I understand why, because it's like, you know, it's a mini game and takes a lot of resources, blah, blah, blah. They need to take old dungeons and refix them and bring them back for Mythic Plus. They don't need to do a lot of them. They don't need to do, you know, but at least throw a couple in there to shake things up. So they need to reuse old content way better. And again, right, this goes back to this again right i don't think you should force people to do the old content but at least have it available you know at least have the content because like how many like how many people have had this experience or know someone who plays the game like this right new patch comes out oh sh shoot i'm excited play the patch do the single player stuff farm some dungeons get aotc oh i'm done quit oh i did the raid that's it it's like well at first you might be like dude what are you doing like you just get aotc and quit like that's all you got but then you think about it, it's like well they've experienced all the content like what are they gonna do you know if they don't want a mythic raid if they don't want to push plus 25 keys they basically have done everything there is to do you know and it's just like yeah i think um i think they need to give people more stuff to do and add more variety to the content All right, number four. 
Now this this gets talked about a lot and I, I talked about this a little bit the other day a lot of these ideas come from dorky because i think they're good mythic plus revamp and what i mean specifically are three things okay number one reduce dungeon length to be three boss like 30 minute like 25 to 30 minutes on average okay make the dungeons just shorter and make them more like not bite size but like dude no more 40 minute dungeons no more 40 minute dungeons okay number two change affixes to be more fun okay make it so when it when all the affixes that they put in the game aren't like miserable right and it's not like oh like that the phrase like what bullshit do i have to deal with this week shouldn't be how people think right it should be like okay what do i have to do to like do cool stuff in the dungeons this week and then number three uh improve visibility on mechanics brown effects frontals etc I feel like dungeons are designed way too much like there's so many different like height levels and there's so much different terrain and there's so much different shit going on that like they just need to make all like the way mythic plus works is everything eventually one shots you or becomes very lethal and they need to make it so you can see stuff on the ground or any like mechanics easier right and i think if the way that it looks would bother people i think what they should do is have an option what if they just had an option that would be like yeah by default it doesn't look like this but you can like turn on something that like makes all of the ground effects like way more, way darker or like way brighter and like makes all the frontals like way more visible and just like it's like a higher visibility mode or something like that like i feel like they this is a big problem in mythic plus right now and the more i think about it the more i agree with it and I think they need to, I feel like this would make it a lot more accessible for people as opposed to just like, they do a weekly 15 and they just like die to something and they don't even know what they died to because they can't even see it. And also, yeah, what Mira first said, like you don't necessarily need a hundred million weak ores and gunshots of everything if the visibility was a little bit better. Um, and I'm gonna steal one from Max too, real quick. Uh, number five is uh, remove mythic lockouts, ser uh, same server nonsense. And pretty much for all of his reasons that he said this, like there's no reason to have a mythic lockout where your guy can only play with the same group in the same raid. Like this is just so like 2005 nonsense that should not be in the game. Like there's no reason that you need to be on the same server as people to like be in a guild or whatever. Like all this stuff, I I don't know. Like they servers and like this whole thing is just gone from WoW. Don't pretend like it's still here. It's just gone, and they sh the, all this is is just friction in the guild system. And this would help people uh, find guilds, and it would make mythic raiding a lot less painful. You know, because like imagine if like you don't want to be a mythic raider, but like you know you could literally just find a like if a guild needs like oh i need you for this boss or whatever you could just like keep doing mythic to sausage every week with some random like bad guild and then eventually you could get your trinket right but yeah so and again would, and what dorky said too there's no chance they they talk about mythic plus yeah of course this is more just me talking about what i want to see in the expansion i wouldn't expect them to talk about anything here except for maybe player housing but I don't think they would talk about any of this stuff. I, I expect just like a bunch of lore shit, to be honest. I, I kind of expect to be let down, but only because it's so early is why. Yo, Cthulhu, thanks for the six month resub and Kane Highway, thanks for the five month resub. I appreciate it. As someone with experience on Tourney Realms, what do you think about Blizzard doing Race to World First there? Um, personally, I don't care. I don't participate in the Race to World First, so it doesn't matter to me. I think that should be like a uh, a decision that the race of world first people make. In my opinion, it makes the race a lot less fun because it's an RPG and there's there's a lot of elements of like preparation that like build up the raid and stuff. And it's like if they took out if they took out 
like all the preparation and all you did was just like go on a tournament realm i feel like there would be a lot less hype because you'd literally be watching nothing until like day one of the race and then it's like oh look like we have all of the perfect characters and all the perfect gear for every boss like i think it would be too much work to like try and make it be a thing yo slim 300 thanks for the five month resub all right let's pull it up on let's pull it up on youtube actually let's keep the music Oh, Hyru is streaming it on YouTube. That's kind of pog. How come I don't even see it? Why isn't it coming up in my recommendations? Uh, World Warcraft. Premiering now. Oh, shit. Are you guys ready for... Wait, let's do viewing party mode. There's no way they won't pull out a tremendously bad idea like Covenants. My opinion about that is the idea is completely irrelevant. It's all about the execution. Turn off music? Yeah, maybe there's some wild music going on, I guess. We'll turn up the wild music some. Yo, Potato, thanks for the 10 month resub, friend. I appreciate it. Here's the thing, right? Covenants could have been great. Honestly, Covenants aren't really bad right now, right? There's nothing inherently wrong with Covenants. And and you might and here's the thing, right? A lot of people say like, oh, it took them the whole expansion. Like, okay, this is something that someone asked, and this is something that Max sort of said. And this is an opinion that I'm hearing a lot, but I think this is a not a correct opinion. A lot of people are saying this, okay? What do you think about Blizzard doing a system very similar to Covenants? Because they they've already iterated on the system and they've learned everything from it and now they'll do it right if they just like basically redid it but added a bunch more cool spells for every class and like did something similar with all the dragon flights and here's what i say about that is like yes and no obviously if they have a if they have a system that's good and they do it from the start then that's good but so many of the things that they quote unquote fixed with covenants was a specific design decision that the community told them not to do at the start of the expansion. It wasn't like they did Covenants and everyone's like, hmm, I wonder how this is going to be, right? You can go back to Dratnos videos from two years ago and he'll tell you the things that they needed to fix that happened, right? He, he would have, you could have talked to two years ago Dratnos and he would have said, yeah, like you need to be able to switch these and all this stuff needs to be account wide. And maybe they should add a, a system to like buy mythic plus gear or upgrade it or something, right? Like all the things that they added throughout the expansion, that was stuff that we could have told them and that they could have listened to if they listened to feedback in alpha and beta. Um, but I don't want to say they didn't listen. It was a specific design decision. In a way and you, you know you might say it was a fucking bad one and you probably would be right but you know they understood what they were doing right it's not like they had no idea they were like oh no the covenants you just de depict the covenants and then what if you want the other covenants i don't know you know like that's they were like they specifically wanted you to have to make that choice and not be able to pick two different covenants it's not like it was an accident or an oversight they specifically wanted those gameplay elements of you to have to pick and not have one of the covenants which in some games right like for instance classic wow what might be an example that's sort of like what the game is right you have your character your characters your identity you play that one character that's not what world of warcraft is in current year you know that's not what world of warcraft is many people in world of warcraft play the game through different characters and different uh content types you know in classic wow there's no different difficulties of the raid there's no arenas there's no mythic plus right you can do that sort of thing in classic wow you can be me zug zug me necrolord tank and that's a thing it's not a thing in uh it's not a thing in, in current wow 
And I, I appreciated that they wanted to try and take it back towards a, an older school approach, but they they knew what yeah, they knew what they were doing. Yo, Rooney Shaman, thanks for the five gift subs, friend. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Alright, here we go. The new expansion reveal. Everyone, shh. Shh. BFA again? Oh wait, BlizzCon announcement? No? Oh. Just random BlizzCon shot? For Azeroth! Yeah, we know. Hi everyone. I'm John Height, General Manager for Warcraft. And Hi, John. with me today are my friends Ian Hazakostas, who is the Game Director for World of Warcraft, and Holly Longdale, who leads up the production team for WoW Classic. I really appreciate you tuning in. I know we're really excited to be able to give you updates on what's happening in World of Warcraft. But first, I want to thank our community for all the feedback you've given us this year, and especially our community council. You've helped shape and influence the updates that we've done recently, and what you're gonna see in the upcoming year. I mean, really, for Shadowlands in particular, the story of the last nine months or so of, of this expansion is all about the community, and it's shaped by what we've been hearing from them, and us realizing as a team that we just collectively needed to do a better job of making sure the community felt heard, and so that led us to the changes we made in 915, but also really re-examining some of the assumptions and foundations of World of Warcraft about things like character investment and mains versus okay, all, yep. how catch-up should work, or the appropriate role of friction in our systems. And I think 915 represented a step in the direction of okay, this is what we want to hear. have more freedom to play World of Warcraft the way they want to play it. And we really built our Eternities End content update from the ground up around those principles. What uh -huh. are some of the things that the community said that, that influenced your decisions for Eternities End? Things like the method well, the and pacing of acquisition of the Covenant Legendary item, tons of tuning, and I think every step of the way, um, we were listening to make sure that we were carrying forward those lessons learned in the course of 915 into Eternity's End and beyond. So, WoW Classic yeah. was really Ian's so proud. Look at that smug look. The community. Yeah, they continue to help guide and support us as talk about the next involves. expansion. World of Warcraft has always been about the world and the players that inhabit it. And we are in a lot of ways curators and caretakers mm -hmm. of that journey and of that experience. And so once this classic community formed and grew, we had to listen to them. It's this tide of listening to the community and paying attention to what is a good experience for our players. All now. right, stop blowing um, smoke. Really Let's go. a sea change in this prove idea it. Prove is you with listened. our Season of Mastery realm, which is a Season of Fresh Start classic. Prove and it. Initially, we were talking about it like it was going to be like a fresh start. Let's try this experiment in a season. It'll be about a year long. And then when the community found out about it, we started seeing this upswell. Yeah, the team just took that idea and ran with it yes. and turned you know what started out as a small community project mm -hmm. into this soul of iron system that became a centerpiece <laughs> of season of mastery and a whole new opt-in hardcore mode that we've seen communities built around yeah. lots of you know thrilling victory and that is cool defeat. i like what they did with five classic hours. even though i don't I play it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it continues, like Burning Crusade Classic. We wanted to balance the Paladin seals between Horde and Alliance, so we made an addition there. We wouldn't have gotten there without the community's input. So, influence the community, you've got another update and pretty significant controversial change for this. Yeah, cross-faction play uh, coming, coming in 925. <laughs> 
um, which is on, on our public test realm now. Okay. A big second piece. Crowd faction. Yep. <laughs> You're breaking with a 17-year tradition. Yeah, it's something. It was not an easily made decision by any means. You know, and I think this is another one of those areas where really we try to take to heart community feedback and requests, and ask ourselves as a team whether there's a way to accommodate such an earnestly held desire and still feel like we're being true to the to the roots of the game. You know, the players desire to play with their friends who might prefer a different faction, or to play with the faction that they more closely identify with, even though they're- All people want to play with their friends really or important. pick the race yeah, that I they want to play. And who would have thought- absorbing the story for each race and- 17 having years. Having that ability to play with all of my friends across factions is fantastic. At the end of the day, the battle cry is for the Horde. It's not against the Alliance. It's not death to the Alliance. It's about pride in one's faction. Oh, I like that a way take. to preserve that and even strengthen that while giving players the ability to make the same choice we've seen the greatest like heroes make time and time again. I can't wait to do this. I'm seeing a lot of my friends that I never knew had a max level character in the other faction suddenly come out of the woodwork. And then you know, with these, this, these cross-faction groups, many of them are going to be diving into something new that we're doing to kind of cap off Shadowlands, a season four. Uh, kind of Boggers. a remix, of a little bit, a bit of a greatest hits, revisiting back our, all of our raid zones across the expansion, bringing in some familiar older favorites into the Mythic Plus rotation, and you know we, we recognize this Mythic is Plus. kind of a, a closing chapter, a little bit of a send off to Shadowlands. As everyone gets ready for what happens next, and what will come next, <laughs> want to give you know a fun. New what if it's not dragons? That would be really so cool funny. Stuff for for. Modern WoW players, I'm super excited about the gear upgrades that you're going to give me and the chance to go back and play some of those, those awesome raids. There's a lot to explore. Very exciting. For our next adventure <gasps> in World of Warcraft, Pause we're going to go back to Azeroth. We're going BFA to space two? with high fantasy. I mean, our fans have asked for this for a long time. This has been kind of the foundation of much of the lore of WoW. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's watch the cinematic. <gasps> My eyes! The world has been sundered. It cries out in pain. We must go to its aid. We entrust our ancestral home to you, the Watchers. All right, show the dragon. We know it's coming. What if this is all just a giant D's nuts joke? And Blizzard just gets all of us with the dragon D's nuts. That would be pretty sick, actually.
He's doing something. Oh, Eval. There it is. Saved. Sounds like the state of the game right now. Together, we shall be Azeroth's protectors once again. Here, the new age of dragons shall begin. Dragonlands. Oh, Dragonflight. Dragons. This is so cool. No one saw it coming. <laughs> no one saw it coming. Carefully kept secret. But seriously, I mean, what did we just see there? The awakening of the Dragon Isles, the return of dragons, the dawn of a new age. Right, we've seen Rathian searching for his father's legacy, searching for the Dragon Isles. There's a reason why he hasn't been able to find them until now. The beacon going off, is that summoning the dragons? It is removing the concealment that had hidden the Dragon Isles from the world, but oh, also it was hidden. beckoning the dragons back urgently in a time of need. I assume pretty good variety of locales within the Dragon Isles? It's yes, the Dragon Isles as kind of standard. There might be some pretty dungeons. Dude, look at that. Zones, four standard leveling zones and a new starter zone that we'll get to in a second. Can you talk a little bit about how the team found ways to thread be so the dragon much prettier aspects than throughout the environments? The, the Dragon Isles are a place that is lush and primal, bursting with oh, elemental energy. Oh, that's pretty. As Azeroth herself reawakens, those primal forces are expressed throughout the environment, whether it's magma activity, volcanic activity, whether it's the icy wastes of the Azure Span. And each one of those has a connection to a dragon flight that we've seen before. And it's going to be an amazing place for players to arrive at and explore. All right, you know I'm going to ask. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, can, can, can I be a dragon? Let, yeah, let, let, let's start getting into some features here and what okay, features. dragon flight means features. for you as well as just a place. Um, so, first off, yes, we have an all-new playable race, oh, the Drakir race. Yeah. Drakir. Uh, this is a dragon, a draconic race, but dragons oh, in, in Warcraft have the ability to take on a humanoid form. Yo, do I get to be a dragon they, druid? They have unique abilities as literally a dragon, that doesn't quite fit any of our existing classes. And so what we're doing is this is not just a new race, but it's also a new class. You know, Wait, what? a new race to World of Warcraft and not just an allied race is something that we don't do lightly, but telling this expansion, this story so focused around dragons felt like the perfect time for it. So if you but, are a Drakthir, you will be the Evoker class. Oh. Drakthir can only be Evokers, Evokers can only be Drakthir. And the reason why only a Drakthir could be an Evoker is that an evoker is really combining the ability to call okay. upon the magic of the different aspects. Everyone's going to play the, the stupid class in the first patch. The Drakthir has the ability to actually take flight and do an Anixia style strafing deep breath over the battlefield, land on the other side, knock everyone back with a wing buffet, and then unleash your magical abilities. All right, yes, what do you guys please. think, Gas? Is it a healer or a tank? <laughs> the evoker has two specializations or not, or a hybrid of either ranged DPS or healer, and they wear male armor. We figured, you know, with the new hero classes, classes we've added over Mail the years, armor, I like we that. have enough melee, we don't need more of those. Okay. And also, probably don't need any more, any more leather wares. The raid leaders are going to love you for that. <laughs> exactly. This yep. is definitely a hero class. And so that means, that, a you know, hero like the class? Death Knights before them, or Demon Hunters, they will be starting level 58. And then mm -hmm. they're going to have a new starter zone. So they're going to have a slightly different journey into the Dragon Isles, as opposed to the rest of us that are sailing there from other parts of Azeroth. Can you talk a little bit about the customizations? Like, what is going to be able to identify my drag hair character. Basically anything and everything. You know, skin color, hair color, jewelry, 
tattoos, oh, wait, what? other adornments. That's, you a, can make that's this not a dragon. The expression of that's a person. Your identity in Azeroth. New zone, <laughs> new class. Yep, it new looks race. a little bit weird. Tell us about some of the, the system updates. Yeah, so systems. Of course, the new expansion brings with it, you know, new systems, new features. Aspect, I think power. In recent expansions, one of the things we've tended to do is really have these deep features that were closely tied to a specific expansion that would then get left behind as we moved on. Mm -hmm. And we've heard loud and clear from players that, you know, it's kind of a bummer to start off every new expansion by leaving a large part of your character behind. By leaving it's a Covenants too. <laughs> so this time around, what no, we're doing is really they got, they got a big old whiteboard and 50 people and they came up with Covenants too. For World of Warcraft's core systems. Things like our progression systems, in this case, our talent system is something that we want to completely revamp. We want to take a look at our UI. We want to take a look at professions. Okay. So with the okay. talent revamp and the arrival talent of Talent revamp? That you sounds cool. Did about how our talents work? I think seeing a new generation of players play with those talents and work through those talent trees really underscored some of the things that, frankly, we lost mm -hmm. when we shifted to the Mists of Pandaria style talents and beyond. Ooh. A big piece of that was some of just the granularity, the feeling of getting a level and spending a point to customize your character to make yourself a bit better in some specific way. But also, you know, the, that sense of hybridity that you could have. Oh, hybridity. That's something that we've largely lost. And so the new talent system avoids directly pitting player power throughput choices directly against those sort of utility hybrid choices. Mm. We know that there's always a right out Dude, there. look at that. And we also understand. Dude, what was that? that? You know, there's a lot of strength in the flexibility of the modern talent system oh, to let whoa. players customize their talents for a particular encounter or for dungeons versus PvP. What was that? We don't lose any of that. Yo, go so back John, to that. UI. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got this 30 inch monitor trying to keep track of where I am on the map, all my buffs, and oh, over here, what's going uh -huh. on in chat. It has literally made my eyes go like this. <laughs> so, yep. you're, and you're not alone in that. We've made a lot of incremental up changes and additions over Your the years. Your posture's bad. But really, this while is you a revamp. This is an overhaul. And so, we're excited to really modernize the look and feel while staying true to the origins of World of Warcraft. Now, at the okay. same time, we're not looking to take away the Sort of power user customization there, add-ons are still there. Okay, yeah, I, that was my first but question. We want a much better default out-of-the-box experience for all players, new Who and alike. And can I reduce Good elements, them, I remove elements? If I want to explore the world and, and Ooh, see the beauty of it. That looks kind of pretty. When it comes to specific elements, as much as possible, we want to let players choose what to show and what to hide so that they can control it themselves. And you mentioned professions. I have a question about this. Go on. Can I wear a chef's hat? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Our approach to professions in Dragonflight is really all about delivering on fantasy and identity as a crafter. And so if you want to be a serious blacksmith, if you want to be a great leather worker, <laughs> we want to deliver the ability to invest time and energy into that. Okay. Become a master crafter. I like that. To make items that are in demand, interact with the community. One of the big pieces that we want to do to support that is a new work order system to have a bit more convenience than just spamming trade chat all day. A work but if order? you are someone, you're not yourself a blacksmith, but you have a bunch of mats and you want them forged into a great sword, you can put that work order up, list your mats, offer a commission, and a skilled blacksmith huh. can come along and make you the weapon of your dreams. I think we left out one thing, though. You can be a drag theater, go to Dragon Isles, can I have a dragon? Uh, What's the fantasy of dragons, oh. if not soaring over the lands? And so we're really excited to introduce a feature that we're calling dragon riding. It's dynamic. Oh with, no! You know everything from momentum to dive bombs, uh -oh. the ability to you know just sort of build uh -oh. that speed up and feel the world rushing past you in a way that should be much more exciting than traditional flight that we've made available in the past. But that's also available for players through a customizable dragon mount right from the start. So oh, from the start? Flying from the start? This is a skill you learn over time, right? To become an awesome dragon rider? Yes, you'll be able to sort of upgrade aspects of your flight, but you will have this new form of flight from the start. And the dragon companion that you have is, of course, very thoroughly customizable, which is a new, oh, a new thing for us for mounts. This is not just a generic dragon hmm. that everyone has, but a drake that is yours. Oh, wow, that's you know, cool. What, what do you want its scales to look like, horns, the shape of its head, your other own custom mount? armor pieces, and more. Take your pick. This is so cool. <laughs> that's so, pretty yeah, so The Dragonflight expansion is going to see players leveling to 70, going to the all-new continent of the Dragon Isles, which consists of five zones, four standard leveling zones, 
and a new starter zone for our Drakthir class, as well as a range of systems revamps, such as a new talent system, an overhaul and update to our UI. Yeah, we're gonna rewind that shit look and look later. With more depth than ever before. Also getting around the Dragon Isles is gonna come in the form of Dragon Riding, which lets you customize and upgrade your own mount so that you can fly in a sense. Yeah, you just talked about this. And of course, as with any new expansion, we have a new do set a, of dungeons, Did he just do a barrel roll? And much more to come. We also have an alpha that will be starting up in, in, in the future. Check out our website for more information and keep an eye out for those opt-in signups if you want to help us test out Dragonflight and give us even more feedback to make it better. We do have a deep dive that follows this, so please stay around. Okay. Classic players, we haven't forgotten about you. All right. You could probably guess where we're going to go. Now we're going to talk, but first One we're going to Mythic Plus. One of the all-time favorite expansions from World of Warcraft. Mythic Let's watch Plus. The cinematic. Now we talk about Mythic Plus. Oh man, this this Mythic Plus dungeon is going to be sick, dude. Oh, God, dude. I feel like my king yet. an announcement for a game that everyone already played, that everyone already knows what it is, isn't really an announcement. I'm sure a lot of people are excited for it, but... My son, the day you were born, the very forests of Lordaeron whispered the name. Arthas. Days have come to an end. Max out. You shall be king. Oh. just incredible, isn't it? Every time I see the cinematic, I get chills. No pun intended, I do, I get chills. As you saw- Okay, sorry if this is toxic Gang for all the classic, classic people, but hold on, this hold year. on. It brings back so many memories. When you see that cinematic, what do you remember from Wrath of the Lich King? Anytime you want to talk about undead Where's frozen the dragons, how can you not go back to <laughs> Sindragosa as the source? That was the first expansion I played with my youngest son. Mm -hmm. So I can remember on that platform, black goo and optimize your character to make yourself a bit better in some specific way. But also, you know, the, that sense of hybridity, ability, hybrid choice. Okay, so what, let's look. Let's look at this talent tree, because this is obviously this is probably like really, really early on. But let's take a look. Oh, sh all right. Hold, look at this. Look at this. This is going to be a small detail. This is going to be a small detail. You guys see this right here? In the bottom left, you can save your talent lockouts. No, no, no. You guys, you guys are saying convoke. No, no, no. Look at this. You can save your talent lockouts. And you can have them, like, you can have, like, this build, that build, like, bear. Like, that's actually pretty sick to have a loadout. So what that means, hold on. So now to go full circle, what that means if there are loadouts, it means that it's they're not going to do any weird stuff, right? They're not going to do any weird stuff with like, oh, you gotta you gotta go to an NPC or you gotta like you you need to respec, right? It's there's literally just loadouts and you, with a reset button on the talent tree. Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look at some stuff here. Hmm. So there's a lot of familiar abilities here. You guys also notice Convoke, right? So here, here's a couple things I'm noticing too, right? So first of all, there's numbers. So it looks like you might be able to go further in to specific trees. So for example, this has two points. This has two points. This has three. That seems kind of cool. Also, what's... Oh, hold on. Oh, no, no. I see. So, hold on. So, there's two talent trees. Wow, this is interesting. So, there's there's one talent tree for your class. 
and another talent tree for your spec. And you build your talents for your class and you have spec talents. That's actually pretty interesting. Hmm. So whenever you switch specs, you'll keep this tree, but then you'll change this one. Hmm. Very, yeah. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing a lot of these are going to be passives, but I don't know, right? Like, these seem like abilities. Well, actually, no, no, no. Yeah, some of them will be active abilities, right? Because they're talents. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is a great question, too. Does it let Resto Druid have an interrupt? So see right here, this is the Skull Bash icon. So he's gone, he's gone with some bear talents here. And he actually talented all the way. I mean, this this looks like a real talent build too, right? Because if you look, he's got like some. This is like something you would do as a resto druid. You would get all the way to get an interrupt in bear form, and you would get frenzied regen because that's only one extra point, and then you get bash. And then like this is probably like something that just improves your bear form and maybe innervate. Maybe innervate is something that you have to go. So here's heart of the wild. This is the inner peace icon. This was a. Uh, survival instincts or maybe it's that conduit i'm sure a lot of these icons are placeholders so don't get too excited here's clone wow this is really really cool this is this is actually pretty exciting vortex is on here so like it's not going to be so cut and dry now i mean i'm just thinking about the druid tree but like it's not going to be so cut and dry about like oh i'm balanced this or whatever right like you'll actually be able to be like I want Vortex and Typhoon, but I'm gonna take some bear stuff too. Like, it's actually, oh, hold on. Okay, we'll, we'll fast this forward now. We know that there's always a right outcome there. Mysterious place where the dragons came from long ago, but we never knew much more than that. We're going to this place oh, that no is more. kind of the broodlands of all the dragon flights, the place where they nested, where they built their civilization. The Dragon Isles was the center of the dragon's kingdom when the world was young and the mortal races were just starting to form kingdoms of their own. But when the Legion invaded for that War of the Ancients, that sundering that resulted from the, the explosion of the Well of Eternity, literal, broke the world. Literal sundering of the yeah. continents of Azeroth. And because of the breaking of the world, that magic kind of drained away and the land went dormant. So they had to leave the Dragon Isles behind. Mm -hmm. And as we saw in the pre-render, they left behind some Titan Watchers to look over the land, and when someday they hoped that elemental energy would resurge once again and draw the dragons home, reestablish their kingdom. And that's when the message goes out to the flights and they feel it in their bones. Now it's the time for the sky to light up with the colors of the aspects once again, and for Alex Straza and the others to come home. But the land has changed a lot in all these thousands of years they've been away, and some very old threats have awakened as well. We're looking into the culture of dragons as they exist in Warcraft. Dragons as we know them today were very different in the early past, the early history of Azeroth. They were much more primitive, much more savage. What we now know as proto-dragons. And then some of the dragons were empowered to become the aspects. The green flight, red flight, blue flight, bronze flight, black flight, each with unique powers, each with the ability to protect the world in different ways. These pillars of draconic power appointed to defend Azeroth from threats within and without. The dragons used that power both for good in the case of most of the aspects, but also for nefarious reasons in the case of the black dragon flight led by Neltharion who would become Deathwing. And what we will find in Dragonflight is that some of these ancient divisions run deep. And so it begs the question, where do we go from here? If this is an opportunity to reclaim their legacy, to be the protectors as the cinematic mentioned that they once were, to do that, they're going to need the help of our heroes, our players, to come to the Dragon Isles with them and face some of these reawakening challenges because it's not just that this land is peacefully waiting for the dragons to return and reclaim it. There's those old enemies that have awakened as well. Yeah. One of those being a race of kind of elemental half-giants, the Jaradin. The Dragon Isles isn't just populated by dragons or mm. just by the Jaradin. There's Can I also look at the talent many tree again? other occupants here in the Dragon Isles that have been here either just recently or for a while, including a fan favorite coming back, the Ooh. Tuscar. That's going to be awesome. We've got other cultures there as well in the Dragon Isles. We're going to find out 
about a civilization of centaurs that predates the ones Ooh, that arose centaurs, on Calendor later. Centaurs, that's kind of cool. And some of our favorite characters that we've seen over the last few expansions, such as Rathian. And whether he's ready to step up into a leadership role, Magnus or back. if there are other alternatives out there that would be better suited to the job of being the aspect of the Black Dragonfly. I think one thing the players are going to be really excited about this expansion is the new playable race, the Drakthir. That's right. And this is something that Neltharion, before he was Deathwing, before he went full crazy world dragon, that he put into motion? Neltharion saw those primalists that were kind of breaking away from the aspects and what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, in those first experiments, he took the essence of dragons, their strength, their nobility, their wisdom, and he combined it with that scrappiness, that, that adaptability that the mortal races had, and he wanted to use that to create the ideal soldier in his mind, the Drakthir. Exploration is really one of the key themes of this expansion. Everyone keeps You're, saying we're new gonna be healer. going Did to they this say it's ancient a healer? place that the dragons left behind long ago. So we've made these huge zones with all kinds of places to delve into and find little treasures and little secrets tucked away. It's gonna be a lot of fun for players to be exploring these landscapes. And there's so much architectural Hello friends, this is Growl. Welcome to my 10.0 guide on the, the Evoker Drakthir class. I'm going to teach so you guys everything you need to know. I've been playing this class a lot on the beta. It's really, really exciting. Really exciting. It's going to be really strong. Lot, lots of new cool abilities. Went awry, but there's questions, you know, thematic questions of what does it mean I'm sorry, to just practicing. your legacy? Are we going to repeat the mistakes of the past? The dragons have had to learn those lessons, just like the mortal kingdoms have oh, had Oh no, to. which and covenant is best for Evoker? The Dude. dragons see this now as the time that they have to return, and they have to step up once again as protectors of Azeroth. We're helping the dragons because the dragons have helped us in the past too. So by using the Explorer's League and the Reliquary together, that allows us to delve into some of that history. And when I look, you know, upon the Dragon Isles and all of its visual splendor, I get so excited for the prospect of a truly Azerothian adventure alongside Calicos, along with Rathian, Ebonhorn, um, with Isera's daughter, Marithra, as each Dude, one Dude, how am I gonna have my talent tree on the their screen? Own flight. I am taken uh. by the exploration and the potential for adventure and just new horizons within this world. There's going to be old stories from that time past, that history that only the dragons knew for the longest time. We're gonna be able to explore that. It really Yo, let's be like honest, breath of fresh air. I'm so memeing a little turn bit, things over to some of our colleagues but having a new healer class is gonna be pretty fucking fun. And the features of Dragonflight. Pushing keys in the first season as an evoker Hello, is gonna be Stephanie. so sick. I'm Josh. I'm Jackie. Hi hey, Josh. And I'm Gary. And we're part of the teams that All right, are building the first shh, shh, zones we encounter in the Dragon Isles. The Waking Shore and the Onaran Plains. The very first zone in Dragonfly you're going to come to is the Waking Shores. It's wild, untamed land. It's waking this up around pretty. you too, and the elements are just going. This is giving me BFA vibes the too. The art team again has hit it out of the park. You'll see like a lava mountain flowing in through the beach. Giant proto dragons swooping down, gobbling up members of your expedition. We what? have such rife opportunities to show elementals rising up because of the crazy magic that's flying around. The one of the things I love is just how you get to the Dragon Isles, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to get on your boat in Stormwind or Orgrimmar, and the first thing you do is sail between like the dragon ruin architectures. The boats come right alongside each other. You can jump from one boat to the other and just start causing havoc on the other what? faction's boat. For those who Was love PvP, this is a great opportunity for war mode. True. It's free for all out there. It's going to be great. <laughs> But it's okay. There's an innkeeper on the beach. So that if you're in that situation and you don't want to be in war mode anymore, you can just hop out right there. The Reliquary and the Explorers League are working together. The Horden Alliance are sending an expedition together. It's not the military, it's not the soldiers. This is the scientists, the settlers exploring this new land. So it's a lot more optimistic tone. One of my favorite things about the Waking Shores is the Red Dragon Flight, led by Queen Alexstrasza, the oh, Life Binder. Shit. They have She's the mandate of nurturing and protecting all life, which means Horton Alliance, Gorlocks, trolls, everybody. So they take that duty seriously. When the Horde and the Lions come to the Waking Shores, they want to be there to help guide the people through the new land and welcome them. But they're uh, not the only one in the Waking Shores. We have the ancestral home of the Black Dragon Flight there too, which has fallen on tough times since Deathwing's descent. And so Rathian's coming over to the Isles with us 
And he's going to try and come to terms with the state of the Dragonflight, which is a few loyal Draconids and Dragon Spawn trying to hold their ground. What can the future of the Dragonflight be if it's just Rathian? Because it's not just the dragons that are coming back to the Dragon Isles, but also their longtime rival, the Jardin. I love the Jardin so much. They're half giants that huh. wield the power of magma. And when the Waking Shores and the Dragon Isles went to slumber, they also slumbered. They're back now, and they are ready Lots of to cool, like, game. enemy races. Yeah, they're massive. They're Lots of cool, like, creatures. Some old ones, like, around, just stomping on definitely a lot of variety they that they have. The enemies of the dragon they have. For so long. They but I don't feel like it's, like, artificial variety and like Shadowlands really is, where it's, like, every single up. area feels, like, super separated and weird. Nurturing life. They don't want to just stomp out the Jardin completely, but they want to make sure that they don't have the power to affect those around them negatively to make sure they don't go on a rampage and destroy the ecosystem that has been created here. And so those are awesome things in the Waking Shore, but Seth, there really is only one right answer for the <laughs> best thing in Waking Shores, right? What? This is true. Ducks. <gasps> we finally have those red feet hooligans in our game. We cracked the technology. We got Figure them. Figure it out. They yep. can fly. You should be proud. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awesome. The Onaran Plains come right after the Waking Shores. Mm -hmm. It's so breathtaking at first glance. The Onaran Plains are big, wide open plains. And the player is going to be constricted well, a little go back bit. To the ducks. And then you see this big contrast of a zone. We don't always get that opportunity, that cinematic moment where the player can have a framed view when they see this area. Come out and you got that postcard shot of that. the planes. Yeah, this looks pretty and too. And then you see this giant fire proto dragon breathing fire and a herd of centaur like harpoon down the yeah. proto dragon, crash into the ground. And the first thing you get to do is go help them kill the proto dragon. Like, how cool is that? Who is Onara? <laughs> Onara is the wild god of the wind. And she's Ooh. appeared before as like this big spirit eagle. She's the one who guided the centaur to the Dragon Isles many, many years ago. She blessed them, took their caravan across, and then showed them the plains. How fun at the beginning of this expansion was exploring the culture of the centaur. The centaur are these mighty, awesome hunters that back when they first came to the Dragon Isles, they fought the green dragons all day long. Eventually, they realized that we're strong, you're strong, maybe we should stop decimating each other's people. <laughs> um, we'll make peace, we'll make an agreement. You guys hang out in the groves, and the centaur will hang out in the plains. But now, the dragons have been gone for 10,000 years. And the centaur have come so far since then. Mm -hmm. And they've been here, and they've been existing and developing their culture. They all came over as one centaur clan culture? led by the mighty Maruk and Tira, and they founded a new life here. So if you want to get across, you have to follow their rules and their traditions. You have to earn their trust. You are the first outsiders to come in generations upon generations. So you have generations. to farm rep from the centaurs. The centaur might rule the open plains, but the green dragons make their home in the groves. And those groves are absolutely gorgeous. And how great a job it is that we have where I can take all of this beautiful artwork and build these beautiful fantasy groves, high fantasy. We want to do lots of things with an open plane, and we the want areas to be look really creative cool, though. with that. But we're restraining A really nice mix of having variety, but also being like pretty zone, true to like, like wow, like not like funky story. weird stuff. Like we certainly couldn't have done that in the vanilla world. Area, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the zones are so big, and you can see so far, especially in Onaran Plains. Mm -hmm. So we talked to the engineers, mm -hmm. and we actually increased that distance. It spurs you on to want to adventure and look through the zone and explore everything. The Druid interesting thing form. for me is we have all these conflicts with the dragon flights. There's missing dragons, there's battles, there's so much crazy stuff happening, but that's not really all we're doing. There's so much extra fun activities for people to do. And the greatest thing is that you need to figure out exactly what's going on and help solve all the problems that are just sprouting up everywhere. We're just really excited to tell a story that's grounded in Azeroth and exploration. There's so much more to talk about. But now, we're going to have some folks talking about the next two zones that players are going to experience in the Dragon Isles. Okay. These are like the end game zones, I assume? Hello, everyone. My name is Kate. I'm Christy. I'm Kate. I'm Sean. We're going to talk today about Caldrassus and the Azure Span. Mm -hmm. So Azure Span is going to be the third zone that players adventure through, and it's one of our biggest zones that we've done in the Dragonfly, maybe even to date. We knew it was going to be like the largest visual elevation change, and it really started with this great concept art. When we first were taking a look at the design, 
we kept coming back to one of our favorite wrath zones, which was Grizzly Hills. Mm. And we really oh, wanted shit. to Grizzly take Hills that, too? but wowify it more. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been up to the Bay Area, but in the morning that coastal fog comes in and dips down into the redwoods and that sun shines through. That's really what we wanted to encapsulate with this forest. And not only we have redwoods, but we've got all different types of trees. Eventually it'll break open into this wide open tundra that's just golden and red and you'll reach up to another level of elevation where you get to see the snow. The majority of the zone is covered in snow and ice. We have giant frozen waterfalls, ice rivers as far as the eye can see. And Sean, I know in the forest we can expect our first creatures. We have a small group that lives there called the gnolls. These gnolls are all gnolls. throughout the forest and Azure Span. They've made this their home. Some gnolls with strange magic that we're going to find out what exactly that's about. Snow gnolls, or as I call them, the snolls. Snolls. Uh, up in the winter area. And then some regular gnolls that are just going to be around the forest area. So then we go into the big open tundra where we meet our second group, the Tuscar. It's going to be really neat to explore their culture a lot more. And those kids are adorable. I absolutely love the Tuscar. <laughs> Honestly, all my downtime is probably just me hanging out with the Tuscar. <laughs> what? So it's been a little while since you've seen them. We remember the Tuscar from Wrath of the Tuscar Lich King. Kind of cool, They're also though. getting a nice, cool upreads for their models, along with expanding their culture. So there are going to be male Tuscar, female Tuscar, Tuscar kids. Aww. So we're going to fight He's alongside cute. them, which includes help from a certain group of dragons, the blue dragons. We're going to follow the story of Caligos, our blue dragon buddy from the Kirin Tor, and he's going to be adventuring into Syndragos' archives. It's a giant zone. There's a lot of surprises. When we're done there, we head over to Aldrazas. Aldrazas. It's really incredible because you Aldrazes? will be going through some of the previous zones and seeing a lot of ruins mm -hmm. uh, for the dragon uh, buildings. But when you get to Thaldrazas, everything is perfectly intact. It's beautiful. It's pristine. It is the seat of power for all five dragon flights and home of the dragons. It feels that way with the huge vertical mountains. We've got these great cave systems where you may end up finding little dragon mm -hmm. hordes. My favorite dragon flight right now is the bronze. They've got a really cool area in Thaldrazis, and their magic is time. There's so many cool story hooks that we could dig into there. There's so many cool gameplay options. And we have a little bit of an adventure for players. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait. We really wanted it to feel like their old stomping grounds. One of the really cool features is going to be the main city and player hub for this expansion, Valdraken. It is a culmination Valdragon? of all of the dragon's efforts to put That's together the what the a city? city would look like. So we ended up having a bunch of really fun small vignettes where you can see that the blue dragon flight is hosting a public library and the red and green dragon flights both have their own separate gardens. We'll also have um, some convenient services mm -hmm. for players, including an auction house in the city. Yeah. Oh, so really an nice auction house in the city. Exotic wares. The thing that Finally. really sold me on Daldrazis was the, the initial concept so art we got of Tearhold. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. And this is a 10,000-year-old Titan technological marvel. Tearhold has these awesome aqueducts that actually come out from the structure all the way to the city across the valley. And in the cinematic, there's just this amazing shot where you see Alexstrasza swoop under one of them, and there's splashes of water cresting across her wings. So when players are flying around themselves, they get to have their Alex Straza moment. What an incredible place and filled with so much history. Everyone's going to be flying around on dragons like idiots. He was a Titan Keeper back in the day who helped the Aspects fight Galakrond. And when they settled on the Dragon Isles, he built this facility. And even though Tyr is gone, the dragons have held him in reverence. But that was 10,000 years ago, and they've let the Titans maintain the place. An incredible amount of history has happened since then. Lights have been nearly wiped out. There have been invasions, betrayals. Aspects have died. And these are the kind of things that leave marks on a society. So now they're all back here, and they're all here together. As we were designing the zone mm -hmm. and the, the city itself, we're trying to figure out, you know, how do we tell those stories at the same time as making sure that this is a really convenient place for players to go mm -hmm. and, you know, go shopping, as you know, they tend yeah. to do. So much adventuring happening on the Dragon Isles. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> as a player, you probably don't have your own dragon wings. You are going to learn the art of dragon riding. It's so vertical, and I'm just excited to, like, dive off the tops of towers and swoop under things. It's actually one of the things that we're about to learn about next. Gameplay. Hi, I'm Jake. 
I'm Andy. I'm Kali. And I'm Graham. And I'm really Hello, excited Graham. to talk to you guys today about the Dracthyr Evoker, our new race and class coming in Dragonflight. We're here to talk about not only the Evoker, but also dragon riding, which is our exciting expression into the exploration of the Dragon Isles. We knew with a dragon-themed expansion, we wanted to let you play a dragon. Not a big dragon, Alex draws a size. That'd be tough to fit into raids. I'm sorry, Jake. Okay. I know, I know. <laughs> it's fine. But a draconic humanoid. So the Drakthir, created by Neltharion. And like I think that might be classes, a really fun class to, to play. If you want to start on the Horde or Alliance side on character creation. So let's talk a little bit about the Evoker, the class they can be. What's unique about it is because the, the Drakthir are created by... It's got to have some cool movement stuff, right? They have the ability to move the magic of all five dragon flights. So Evokers can take advantage of red magic and blue magic and bronze magic. And to show that, we created a visual, what we call a prismatic effect. This prismatic effect is basically the coalescence of all their energy as they channel it into whatever spell that they're going to cast. You have a red magic spell called Pyre. So when you shoot it out of your mouth, it twirls in the air with all five of the Dragonflight's magic as it turns into the red spell before landing on your enemies and exploding and hopefully burning them. And I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that vibe across that they use all five was really important to us, but we did want to make sure that each specialization focused on two, because casting five different colors gets a bit mm -hmm. messy. So their damage dealer specialization, their first of two, Devastation, mostly focuses on red and blue magic. Red being very fast and explosive, burning everything with pyre, whereas blue is more focused and overwhelming. You can shoot a beam of energy out of your mouth so it's a fire and frost one single damage. enemy in front of you. That can There's heal. a healer spec called Preservation. The healer Press, spec okay. is going to focus mostly on your green and your bronze magic. So your green is going to be evocative of the Emerald Dream, your growth and your nurturing spells. And then you have your bronze magic, which is going to be more timey-wimey. So you get to heal a wound faster. So in addition to the visuals and the animation, which all make feel very powerful, we really wanted the player to have a physical connection to the cast. We have a new type of spell called Empower, where when you actually hold down the button on your keyboard, it charges up the spell. The longer what? you charge it up, it might do more damage or hit more targets depending on the spell, but it gives you this really physical connection and control. That's that might actually be kind of cool. I think it's feeling really, really good. We have some great animations. Thank you, Andy. You're you love it, Andy. You feel physical when you're casting your spells. You can actually Wait, everyone's saying, oh no. cast while you're flying. Raining fire and death from above, it's great. In addition to the gameplay, though, another part of feeling draconic is looking like a dragon. Well, we talk about dragons breathing fire, but you know what's actually fire? What's actually These fire? customizations. Oh, my goodness. Hey. <laughs> but no, they're really, really they're cool. They're awesome. Because you have both that was your a draconic scripted. form and your humanoid form. And the customization options for both of them are amazing. They're very good. What but about color? Just tell yeah, me tell you us about the, the color. This you can is do so a lot scripted. Of matching, so your visage form can have scales that are the same color as your draconic form. But my favorite? Super favorite part mm -hmm. of customization for the visage form, mm -hmm. hair. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I can actually do this in game. In ga yeah. The tech is here. <laughs> we finally <laughs> did it. As players make their way through each of the areas of the Dragon Isles, they'll partner up with the Dragon Flights to move through the air as they've never done before. You'll notice I did not say flying, because <laughs> flight has a very specific meaning for World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not flying. And, and we're talking about something new called dragon riding. And as the players are honing their dragon riding skills, they're going to get to see all new animations that go along with the different look and feel of the drakes. Barrel roll? We're aiming to shake up movement with this new system, providing players with a deeper immersion with forces like momentum and gravity. We knew that for Dragonflight, we were going to have the opportunity to show players a whole new set of Dragon Isle drakes, completely unique from all the other things they've seen in World of Warcraft. Huh. And so we wanted to come up with a movement system that would add that sense of physics, weight, and gravity, like you were mentioning. We knew it was going to take a huge team effort, not just animation, but it was going to take effects. It was going to take the engineering team, who we rely on heavily. And that, combined with some new animations, really helps to lend that feeling of physics as you move through the air in ways that you haven't before. And the icing on the cake is going to be some really cool effects that we've added on top of all of that. So for example, when you start hitting you know, maximum velocity, you're going to see contrails coming off the edges of the wings. And then as you do your rolls and spirals, you build up more and more speed. There's going to be some screen effects on the display to indicate that you're They haven't shown any like velocity. dismounting or like anything, just flying around. Kind of like what's the point of, of flying reality. around? As players Are you going to be able to dismount Isles, wherever you they'll want? They'll discover new cosmetic and options wherever you to want? fine tune their Dragon Isle Drake's appearances. Things like snoots, horns, tails, mm -hmm. 
elusive Dragon Isle Drake armor, and more. Can I have spikes? Definitely. OK. We want to provide players with all new skills to play with, as those who can use their momentum well can reach higher and higher heights and bring on new, more difficult challenges. We just have so many new, gorgeous options mm -hmm. to choose from, and I'm just so excited for all of them. I'm excited for the whole thing. I mean, it's been a lot of fun to work on, but I can't wait to actually get in the game, play it with you guys. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to fly around. I bet they never play with each other ever Next up, once. you're going to hear about the talent revamp and the UI changes coming in. All right, here we go. Here we go. Sit up straight. Finally. Let's hear it. Hello, my name is Brian. I'm Crash. I'm Jay. And I'm Laura. We are very excited to share so we are finally revamping the WoW HUD UI. And it is also time for a major revamp to talents and specializations. I have a big question for the group. How long do you think it took for us to finally revamp the WoW HUD? My guess is like 15 years. Close, 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. Wow. You know, technology has changed a lot since we made the UI back in 2004. Now you have like bigger monitors and us, we have better dev tools to work with. So it makes sense to have the revamp right now. Also, if you look at the game today, the art evolved beautifully over the years. And if you look at the HUD, the HUD looks like it got frozen time. So when we yeah, approached this, we wanted to create a layout experience that players Evil could wow customize, move things around, adjust it to fit their needs. Add-ons today, they do a lot for player customization. The downside is, is that not everybody uses them. It's about time that everybody has the opportunity to use them, that they become a part of the base UI. Yeah, and we are working very closely with our user research team to make sure we are hitting the goals there. Would players. you guess her where she's it from? It kind of sounds new German. Functionality to improve accessibility in a lot of areas and on top of that, we are going to be improving the art. Yeah, so the art update, it's a big part of this project. The UI that we have today has a lot update? of charm no, yeah, that and personality, sound German. and players have been using that for 18 years. That's like so more northern, I think. with that in mind, we want to respect that was the like things an really like in the word UI, update. but do a more than take to it. Removing the clutter and giving more visibility for your gameplay. So the new minimap, it looks bigger, and the health bar is also much bigger. If you look at the action bars and the bottom menus, they have less head frames, and you can really open up your gameplay, so you don't have a lot of your UI in front of you. And of course, we want to find iconic pieces from the current HUD, but we want to bring it back in a nice the way. The UI kind of so looks nice. So we for sure updated the Griffins. They look so nice now. And the Horde, don't worry, we got you. We're going to have your version as well. So let's talk about the edit mode. We are putting a mode in that will let players move various HUD elements around on the screen. So I'm able to move, move anything map, base? say, from the right corner all the way over to the left corner. Or if I want to bring my action bars from the bottom and kind of put them more that's in kind the of center pog. by my character. That's those pretty, are that's all pretty nice, that actually. Able to do. Absolutely. And each of those different components will have various sets of options that you'll be able to work with. They'll be able to save it, edit it, copy Ooh, it, looks good. name it. Also, it'll remember which spec you're in. So if you're someone who jumps around a lot, as you switch, it will switch to whatever HUD layout you have for that spec. This is an ongoing project. We're going to keep working on it. So we really want to hear back from you. A project that we're all excited about that we've been collaborating a lot Mythic on Plus. is something that's pretty UI intensive, and that's the talent system. It had oh, yeah, changed for a long okay. time, like you said before. And we really started with how can we have players have more choice over what their character has? As you level up, we give you a new spell or a new ability, something that kind of makes you stronger, but it's, it's determined by the designers. We decide the order. Yeah, we started looking for a system that would give players a much wider set of options. And after looking at all those things, what we really returned back to was the idea of trees. But it's actually two trees. We have a, a class tree that offer different class utility. And then we have a spec tree that is focused on performing your role, whether that's damage tank or healing. Can I just jump in and say that I personally am super excited about mm -hmm. having trees come back? I am too, actually. a big nostalgia hit for me. As we yep. said, we have these two trees because we feel like picking a specialization is a really important part of your World of Warcraft character now. And so we want to make sure that when you choose that, it kind of affects the tree in some way. Yeah, as soon as you open your talent tree, you'll see something new. The class side will have some abilities filled out for free, just kind of starting you off. 
in that spec you've chosen, but then you'll have your first point to spend in the class tree, which could be something related to that spec or role, or it could be something from elsewhere in the class. There's a lot of uh, things that we can do here, and part of that is encouraging players to perhaps make combinations that they've never really been able to see in the game yep. before. This is an opportunity to put a lot oh, more art in and fantasy in the actual talent invoke? UI itself. You Mother have w. seen that a lot through most recent expansions, but not the base UI. We want you to be able to tinker with it. You know, we want you to be able to make a lot of changes at a lot of times and not necessarily have to commit. The power really is coming back to the player. Uh, it's not something we Flourish want people to feel evoke. locked into. And so one of the things that we'll be preserving is the ability to change these talents uh, at the same kind of frequency that you do now. Yeah, the old school. How many players, people want to see their class tree time, right now? Just think, really fucking yeah, bad. I'll, I'll go from my raid I'd love to, to see some of the other trees. Figure out like what actually like mouse over stuff. And that's a process we want to make really fluid. So we are building a save load feature that lets yep. you create your build, name it, save it, and then load it up very quickly and freely. Talents were really about the breadth of options. We've made all these different cool things over the years, but when are they at their coolest? It's when players can hold the building blocks of what can make up their class, their spec, and put them together in a way that works for them. So these are really cool features that we've been working long and hard on, and we're very excited about them. And it's just an early preview of the things we've been doing. Nice. We now can't next, wait to see the reaction Mythic that Plus. you have to them, and please reach out to us and let us know your thoughts on them. And next up, we're going to talk about Mythic professions Plus. and dragonflight. Hi, I'm Joanna. And I'm Eric, and we're going to talk about our plans for professions in Dragonflight. Professions have been a staple of World of Warcraft forever, and they've seen lots of really cool incremental updates over their life. But for Dragonflight, we want to do something a bit different. We really want to rethink but it's a summon stone. and figure out how to Dude, make I kind of want one of those in my room. as a player, if that's what you want. We really want to make sure that professions feel fun and relevant across all levels of gameplay. That brings us to our first update, something that we're calling Crafting Orders. If you want to have something crafted for you, but you don't have the skill or the right profession to do it for yourself, you can have it crafted through a crafting order. You can basically browse any of the recipes that can be crafted, pick the one you want for yourself, and then you include some or all of the reagents needed for the recipe, including ones that only you can get your hands on. You can find someone in person to do it right in front of you for you. Or you can also go to an NPC and using an auction house-like interface, send the order out. If you're doing this, you can pick, do you want to send the order to anyone, sort of a public order, or do you want to only send it to your guild or to a specific other player? Maybe it's a friend who you know will be able to craft the item really well for you. If you are really dedicated to your craft, you're going to be the best at what you do. One of the coolest things about this is the item you had crafted can also be soul bound. In the past, you could only get your hands on crafted soul bound items by having that profession yourself. Now anyone can have them crafted for them, which is really neat and really expands the number of items that we can provide that are really powerful because everyone can have them crafted through the crafting order system. Here's the thing about improved crafting. This is also really crafting. cool because it means as a crafter, you can start building your client base. People are going to come back to you. To Wait, crafted items. quality you're the making it, four or you're five? Doing a what the? Extra. You're also going to be leveling up your profession. It's going to be really great. So the first time you go to craft, you're going to notice- I actually foresee that people, I think people are going to complain about this. the introduction of quality, both to your crafted items I and think it looks items. cool. Quality but I think people are going to complain. Way. If you craft something that's a higher quality, it's just going to be better. For a piece of gear, that probably means a higher item level. If it's, for instance, a potion... You know, we're going to say too grindy, powerful, fact, pay to quality. win, WoW tokens, too expensive. UI. We've put a lot of work into it to make sure that the professions feel really special and unique. And another thing you might notice in the crafting UI that's new is the introduction of stats, specifically to your professions, both Crafting and yeah, data. they didn't and say how to how to determine quality. Is it quality. random, like Probably Lost Ark, or is it deterministic? Your ability to craft items at a higher quality is through crafting specializations. We've okay. had crafting specializations in the past, as far back as original World of Warcraft. With Dragonflight, you can go out and earn specialization points in a whole bunch of different ways. So maybe you find an old book on a bookshelf in a ruin somewhere, or a hermit in a cave who can teach you a little bit about your profession. So let's say you're a blacksmith, and uh, you might decide that first you want to become an armor smith. And the more points you spend in armor smithing, the better you're going to get at crafting all armor. This also means that if you specialize one way, other people in your guild may specialize in a completely different path. So this means that your guild could have several top blacksmiths, and everybody is providing something unique and valuable to the team, which is really People cool. are going to complain about this. That reminds me of another update 
we're actually adding crafting tables to all the different crafting professions. We're going to take those oh. and we're going to put them all in the main city of Valdraken. And you know, you're going to go in nice. there and you're going to get to see all the different players crafting their items at their cool crafting tables. Yeah, it means you're going to walk into the city and you're going to see like all these alchemists huddled over here and you're going to see all these blacksmiths over by the forge. There will be other players filling orders or grabbing orders. It's going to be a whole new crafting area that's going to make you feel really part of the world. It just seems like a much more lively area than it has in the past. What I'm most excited about, though, is the gear. We're introducing new types of gear for every profession. And when you go to, <laughs> say, mine a node, you're actually going to just switch into that gear. It's going to be really great. You're not going to have to carry that stuff around in your backpack anymore. It's actually going to be dedicated slots for each, oh, nice. each of your That's pieces good. of gear. But I'm a numbers guy. I love progressing. All pieces of profession gear will have those special stats that we mentioned before on them. And as you get your hands on better versions of the gear, oh wow, crafting it's really gonna gear, help you get better at your profession. That that is you. that is thank you pretty cool. for tuning into the Dragonflight deep dive. Now we've lot, heard a lot about now the content Mythic and Plus. changes coming in Dragonflight, and we've got a lot more in store for you in the coming months. Until then, we'll Until, see you next. No, hour. next is Mythic Plus. And...